say it with me loud, can you? Here comes a, here comes a judge. Matthew chapter 7. We looked at almost the entire chapter. But the message first was don't play God. Don't play God. God has not called you to judge. I don't care what your church taught you. You were taught wrong. Okay? You're not called to judge. And it's something that goes on inside of us. I say you're not called to judge. And something says, but wait a minute. I'm supp-. It's almost like we think we're supposed to. You're not. I'm not supposed to judge people. Period. Judge yourself lest you be judged. You're going to spend your life judging other people. And you're going to one day stand before the Lord. And He is the only judge. And you should have spent time on making sure you were in Christ. You hear me today? Okay. So, we also, we'll move the message a little bit, Rog. We'll, we'll click along here. We also had a message on discernment. We also had a message on self-deception. And I thought I was done. But I thought we'll do one more message because there was a few scriptures at the end. And I wanted to give one more message. And here's the message title today. Rock solid. Say that with me. Rock Solid. Now, by the way, if you're here today, we use this big screen. All the scriptures are on the screen. You can follow along with me and I ask you to talk a little bit so you'll remember what you studied today with me. So rock solid. And I can't hear but out of one ear, so you've got to be loud today. Amen. Is that okay? Say. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Rock solid. Building your life on the what? And not on the what? That's what we're talking about. And part of the motivation of this message was also the news I heard this week, like you did, of Robin Williams taking his life. So beloved. So many people liked him. Not talking about his faith or what he believed. I'm just talking about what he did. Made people laugh. And whether you like him or not, bottom line is the guy can make you laugh. But to take your own life like that, hang yourself. Wow. And I want to, you know what? What we do here at Fellowship Church is important. Say that with me. What we do here at Fellowship Church is what? It's important. It's very important. It's very important. Giving people the message of Christ. Loving on people. Letting people. You don't know what people are going through. I don't know what you're living through right now. But I know one thing is we can come here. We can work. We can set up. We can have various folks all over this place loving on you and encouraging you. I can give messages that are going to be truth. Amen. That are going to help you from God's Word. And what we do is important. We can see people saved. We see many, many people come to Christ here this ministry so that you can get your feet on the rock and get it off the sand. Amen. Say. It's huge, man. So today's message, rock solid. We're going to look at it in just a bit. Keep rolling with me, Raj. Now, so far in this little series, we've learned to judge ourselves. Say that with me. We've learned to what? Judge yourself. Again, I don't care what you've been taught. I came from a church where they'd have folks at the back check see if the ladies were in a dress. Are you kidding me? Seriously. Really? We're not called to do that and we're not going to do that at Fellowship Church. Do you hear me? Come on. Grow up. Judge yourself. I don't care what you've been taught. Like I said, and not, we talked about not deceiving ourselves. If you're not careful, you'll spend time looking at other folks You'll, 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 you'll end up thinking you're okay and they're not. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You're deceived. Okay? We gave a whole message on that. And then a message on exercising discernment. No, we're not supposed to judge people, but we are to be discerning. Sure we are about decisions in our life. And so we talked about it. Now today, we're moving. The end of Matthew chapter 7. The end of Matthew chapter 7. There were a few verses we didn't hit. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them because they're pretty self-explanatory, but we've got a message we're going to build off of it. Jesus speaking. This is all Jesus talking. The scribes, the Pharisees are there. The crowds are The disciples are there. And he's been talking about judging. And nobody judged better than the Pharisees. Okay? And the religious crowd. And this was a bold message that he gave. The last part. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine, this talk went back to Matthew 5, 6, and 7, that he'd been giving. Whoever hears these sayings of mine and and does them, I will liken him unto a what? 
which built his house on a what? On a what? And then, and then the rain descended, and the floods came, and the what? The winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a what? A rock. And everyone that, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And the rains descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it fell, and great was the fall of it. What happened? Did I mess up? Say it again. You changed. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, am I right? I'm sorry. I'm sick. <laughs> Let's do it again right here. This is going to be on radio. Fix it. Thank you. Here we go. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the what? And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it what? And great was the what? The fall of it. Hang in here with me. Sorry to mess us up. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were what? They were astonished at His doctrine, at His teaching. The people. Wow! For He taught them as one having what? Boy, this is important. He taught them as one having what? Like He knew what He was talking about. Like what they were saying didn't make sense and what He says is making sense. Because he says he taught them as one having authority and not as the who. Well, finally, finally I hear something the folks are saying that I can understand. Are you hearing me? And I get that. And what he says is making sense. I like what this man says. So, I want to take that last little bit of Scripture and build a message today. With Jesus' words, rock solid. Building your life on the rock and not on the sand. Let's keep moving. How do you live your life and at the end of it, it don't look like that? Say, don't you want to live your life? And when times get hard or maybe it's your time to go, wouldn't you like to know that's not what you think your life looks like and your situation looks like. Say, amen? Come on. I asked Roger to get several pics of Robin Williams. Again, not to pick on him. I feel sorry for his family, for his children. I'm saddened because that man honestly made me laugh. How many he made you laugh before? Look at that. Yeah, sure he did. And me having the little young'uns we're doing little youngin stuff all over again. Like yesterday, we spent two hours almost watching the little rascals again. Danny can quote the whole thing almost. She's three years old, but dear darling, I hate your stinking guts. You make me vomit. You're scum between my toes. Love alfalfa. I mean, I can hear this now. So then also, we watched Popeye. A few weeks ago, watch Popeye. I didn't even know Robin Williams was in Popeye. And just like Popeye, you could never understand a thing Popeye said. When he did the part, you couldn't understand the thing he said hardly. It was hilarious. It was a funny movie. They just loved that little movie. And then, Hook. He played Peter Pan. How many saw that movie? It was a good movie. I enjoyed it. It just saddened. You know? And to have everything. And to uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. And the different movies. You know, a lot of movies. He didn't put them all up on the screen. But, you know, probably had everything a man could want. Right? Say. But to have those, whatever you want to call it, depression, demons, something. Someone told me word recently that, you know, obviously had been in rehab and things like that. But also... Uh, his wife said maybe early stages of Parkinson's disease. Listen, guys, here's the deal. We're all going to get something. Most likely, we're all going to get something in this room. Did y'all know that, yes or no? 
You can pray to the cows come home. I believe in prayer too, buddy. Okay? But the bottom line, it's appointed that a man wants to die, and after this, the what? The judgment. We're all going to die. We're all going to die. It's going to happen. So what are you going to do? When you don't have the physical body you used to have, what are you going to do when you don't have the health you had? What are you going to do when somebody walks out of your life? I don't love you. I don't want to be with you. What are you going to do? Say. This is a problem, don't you think? Yes or no? Jesus said, if you'll listen to me, if you'll listen to me, you'll be like a man who built his house on the rock. And when those winds come, and I like the words that's used, and beat, beat, beat. How many of you felt beat? Can I see your hand? What happened to me? I felt beat, man. I felt just beat. Somebody beat me. What are you going to do? Go hang yourself? You going to drink it away? Is that your plan? Excuse me. Like a magician up here. <laughs> that's, that's cough drop paper. <laughs> Here's a cough drop. Hey, there you, there you go. Come on. Here we go. Listen, listen. What are you going to do? Because mess is going to happen. Mess is going to happen. Y'all listening? What are you going to do? Let's talk about it. How do you come to the end of your life and it not be a disaster? How do you come to the end of your life and it not be a disaster? I don't care the good that you do. The good that you can do, you end up taking your life or something like that. It's just horrifying. The pain for the family. My mother was murdered. And my stepdad shot himself, killed himself. It destroyed our family. The pain today, I still feel the pain today, 20 years later. How do you come to the end of your life and it not be a disaster? Are y'all hearing me today? Boy, I thank God for the Scriptures, don't you? I really do. I thank, thank you, Lord, for loving us enough to give us some word. Amen? Let's look. Rock solid. Rock solid. Build your life on the rock and not on the sand. Let's talk about it. Now, Robin Williams is a funny, funny man. Funny. But you know who else was funny? Jesus was funny. Jesus was funny. Oh, he was funny. He had the crowd in stitches. You might not have ever heard that before because I don't think I ever said it before. But I thought about it. Oh, he had the crowd in stitches. Not necessarily the regular folk, the common folk, but he had the scribes and the Pharisees just busting a gut. And what he was saying, because what he said sounded so contrary to what they taught. Are y'all hearing me? Rock solid teaching probably had them in the floor laughing. Let's look at some of it. Here we go. Number one, how do you build your life on the rock and not on the sand? This is the words of Jesus. Number one, the way to become great is to become what? Ha! Can't you hear him saying that? The way to become great is to become small. Ha, 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 ha. He's crazy. He's full of it. Can't you hear him saying that? Yes or no? That's what Jesus said. Except he wasn't being funny. He's being serious. Let's look at it. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her son. Several scriptures. Worshiping him, desiring a certain thing of him. Stay with me on this. He said unto her, What will you? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit the one on the right hand and the other on the left hand in your kingdom. Now that's funny. But Jesus answered and said, you know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I'm going to drink of? And to be baptized with the baptism that I'm going to be baptized with? They said unto him, we're able. He said unto them, you shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. They didn't have a clue what he was, they were, what he was saying. But to sit on my right hand and on my left, that's not mine to give but it shall be given to them for whom it's prepared of my who. Stay with me. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. For sure. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Hang on. You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great, they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be, say it with me, Great among you, let him be your what? And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your what? Servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to minister, 
to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give His life a what? A ransom for many. You want to build your life upon the rock? Remember this. A way to become great is to be small. The things that you're giving your life to, oh, if I can get this, and I can do this, and I can have that position, I'm going to tell you something right now. Sand, sand, sand. Are you hearing me, yes or no? Sand, sand, sand. Keep looking. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but He made Himself of no reputation. He took upon Him the form of a what? A servant. He was made in the likeness of men, being found in fashion as a man. He humbled Himself. Say that with me. He what? Humbled Himself. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted Him, giving Him a name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, of things in earth, of things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus Himself, the Son of the living God, God Himself came to this earth and He humbled Himself. He became small, became a little baby. Is that true, yes or no? Became a little bitty baby. You want to be great? Be small. That's building your life on the rock. Are you hearing me? Be a servant. Be humble. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, here's why I'm saying this today. We've been talking about judging. What does judging do? It makes us better than somebody else, doesn't it? Yes or no? We're great, you're not. Is that what it says, basically? That's sand. Give your body a living sacrifice to the Lord. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Look at this verse. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that's among you, say it with me, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to what? But to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members of one another. First point. You want to build your life on the rock? You want, to, you want at the end of your life it not to look like that house that was sinking? You want at the end of your life it not to be a disaster? Let me tell you something. The way to be great is to be small. You live your life like that. And there'll be plenty around the bed when you die. Did you hear me? Say, you live your life full of yourself. Bye, Granny. You're listening. Number two, how do you build your life rock solid? Just words of Jesus, sort of funny words. Funny, funny to a lot of people in the crowd. Funny. Here's another funny one. Hey, he's preaching, he's talking to people. And Jesus says, the way to win is to lose. And the Pharisees go, ha, told you, he's crazy. Y'all shouldn't listen to him. He's nuts. Sounds a little crazy, doesn't it? The way to win is to what? Say it again. The way to what? Win is to what? Are you kidding me, Clark? Jesus taught that. Yeah, look at this. Matthew 10. We're talking about having a rock-solid life. Let me tell you something. If you think the way to win is to win at everything, and no matter what it takes, I'm going to win, that's sand. And there's going to come a time in your life when you can't win anymore. You can't even get out of bed. Are you hearing me? Guys, we need to think about this stuff. The way to win is to lose. He that loves father or mother more than me, Jesus said, is not worthy of me. He that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He that takes not his cross and follows after me is not worthy of me. Say verse 39 with me if you don't mind. He that finds his shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall what? Find it. The way to win is to lose. Sounds a little funny. Let's keep going. Another scripture, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited? 
It's what we're talking about today. What does it matter if you get it all? What is a man profited if he gains the whole world and loses his own one? What's up then, man? What you gonna do then? Come on. What shall a man give in exchange for his what? For his soul. Jesus said the way to win. As you pick up that cross, you follow me. You lose your life. And you realize, I'm your creator. I'm your God. You serve me. You follow me. You've got to win in the end. If you lose your life for me. I lost my life for you, Jesus says. Look how it worked out for you pretty good, didn't it? Yeah. You lose your life for Him. It's going to work out pretty good for you too. You hearing me? Come on. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of His Father with His angels, and then He shall reward every man according to His what? To His works. That you follow Him. We're not going to get off on that. He's not talking about working your way to heaven. Nothing like that. Matthew 6. Just another scripture. Therefore, take no thought. Say, what shall we eat? That's what we spend most of our time thinking about. What should we drink? What should we go shopping for? That's what we spend our life doing. Guys, that is life to a lot of people. That's not a rock-solid life. For after all these things do the Gentiles or the heathen seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Listen, you want, you want something rock-solid? Lose your life and, and live for the Lord. Look at this one. Seek ye first the kingdom of who? And His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow is going to take thought for the things of itself. I love this scripture right here. It's helped me in my life so much. The last part. Say that last part with me. Sufficient unto to the day is the what? <laughs> Don't worry about tomorrow. There's enough mess today to deal with. Amen? Come on. So what's another rock solid principle? The way to be great is to be small. Hope you're not going to sleep on me. Number two, the way to win is to what? Funny, man. Funny. I can only imagine what the crowd's saying. Well, they said he was drunk. Remember when they talked about Jesus being a, a drunkard? Remember that, yes or no? They probably heard some of this talk and went, man, that guy's been drinking. Did he just say the way to win is to lose? Or what? You hearing me? Let's look at another one, another funny one. The way to be fruitful is to die. You all know a dead tree produces great fruit. Last time I checked, the trees that die in my yard are dead. I don't get a dime's worth of nothing out of them. He said the way to be fruitful is to what? I'm talking about building your life on rock solid. He did say broad's the way. Many go that way. That's the way of destruction. Narrow is this way. Few there be that find it. No wonder there's few there be that find it. This is crazy stuff. <laughs> <clears throat> Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Keep looking. Verily, verily, I say unto you, say this part with me, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and it abides, but if it, it brings forth much fruit. He that loves his life shall what? He that hates his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. It's sort of a shocker and it's an eye opener, but it really isn't all about you. It's not all about me, is it? Say. It sounds like I've been given this life so that I can die to myself so that Jesus Christ can live through me. And that's the way to have a rock solid life. Is that what it sounds like to you? If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my Father honor. 
die to self, live for him. Rock solid teaching. And you won't get to the end of your life and it'd be a disaster. And wonder about what the, what's the meaning of life. You'll know the meaning of life because you've lived for him. John 15, Jesus said, I'm the true vine and my father's the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. So you and him is going to bring forth fruit. You by you is going to just not do much. Amen? Say, that's the point. Now you're clean through the word which I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you're the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth what? Much fruit. For without me you can do what? Nothing. Now you can live your life without him and get to the end of your life and it be a disaster. Or you can live your life with him and bring forth much fruit and get to the end of your life and be standing on rock solid territory and be glad to see him when you see him. Amen. That's the plan. If a man abide not in me, he's cast forth as a branch. He's withered. And men gather them and cast them into fire and they're burned. That's pretty strong teaching right there. The way to be fruitful is to die. This is a long scripture. Hang in here with me on it. Know you not that so many of us who were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death? When you become a, a Christian, a follower of Christ, you're dead with Christ. Now you're alive unto God. That's a hard thing to sometimes settle in our life. Therefore, we are buried with Him by baptism into death. That is like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in what? Newness of life. God wants me to have a new life. That's the way to have a rock-solid life. I'm new now. I'm new in Christ. I'm alive unto God. I'm dead unto Gary, alive unto God. It's not easy. That's the way to have a rock-solid life. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall also be in the likeness of His what? Resurrection. We don't like that death part, but we like that resurrection part one day. Well, it's our time to die right now. You'll rise one day. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with Him. That the body of sin might be what? There's no way to really deal with you or deal with me unless we deal with it that way, that our old man needs to be crucified. That henceforth we should not serve what? For he that is what? Is what? Freed from sin. I tell you what, Gary don't have much problem. When I'm dead to Christ and I'm serving Christ, I don't have, a, I don't have near as much trouble sinning right then. <laughs> my problem is when I'm alive unto Gary, that's my problem. I just what Gary wants to do. The problem is if I do what Gary wants to do all of my life, I'm going to get to the end of my life, it's going to be sinking sand. Amen. Hey, a little deep message today, but it's good for us. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we all shall, shall what? Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more. Death hath no more dominion over Him. For in that He died, He died unto sin once, but in that He lives, He lives unto God. Likewise, reckon yourselves to be dead. Indeed unto sin, but what? Alive unto God through Jesus Christ our? Does he say when we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins? Okay? So, we know we're sinners. Live for him. Confess your sin. You can live a life that has a life of meaning and purpose. You're hearing me today. You do not have to come to the end of your life when the doctor says, it's almost over. And you to just absolutely lose it. You can have the peace of God that passes what? Understanding. All understanding. Don't you want that? Say. Now your family's going to grieve? Sure. But if they can know that you know Jesus, their grieving's going to be made easier. Did you know that? And a lot of folks I've been with when it comes to their time to die, they're not grieving. They're ready to go. Because they built their life on the what? On the rock. 
rock solid, building your life on the rock. Now understand, we're almost done. The fourth one. It's not quite as funny, but it is. Basically, the way to heaven is to receive God's gift. Jesus said, basically, that we need to become as a little child. Now, that was funny. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he said, you need to become as a little child. Can you, can you see the religious Pharisees? Work this whole time. All this position. And Jesus basically said, hey, look, they don't need to be like you at all. They need to be like little, little Jack over here. Can't you see that being sort of funny? I think probably the folks laughed at that one. <laughs> Did you see what you told him, folks? <laughs> Fun right there. He was teaching a great truth. The way to heaven is to receive God's gift. Words of Jesus today. Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted, say it with me, and become as what? You shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little what? The same as the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. <sighs> you know for us, if we're not careful, we're going to get to the end of our life and it's going to be sand. Because we thought the way to heaven was a grown-up kind of thing where we work our way to heaven. Because see, we've been taught from an early age, you need to work, boy. And so therefore we think we're going to work our way to heaven. The church is still screwed up on this, on this, on this, on this doctrine. You think you've got to do something good to get to heaven. You don't. <laughs> You're bad. Say I'm bad. Go ahead. Can we say it again? I'm, I'm, I'm bad. Say. That's why Jesus Christ came because you bad. He's good. See, the Bible says the wage of sin is death. The Bible says there's none good, no, not one. Does it say that? It does. All of sin and come short of the glory of God. Does it say that? Even the nice little grandmother, she sinned to, mm-hmm. Sure. She's not God. We've all sinned, but there's something about that struggle. We think we've got to do something to get to heaven. Listen, you want to build your life on something rock solid? The way to heaven is to receive God's gift. Did you hear me today? There ain't nothing better than a little child at Christmas. <laughs> They're so excited, aren't they? To receive their gift. Or their birthday. Woo, my. Birthday parties for little kids. They just love it. They love the gifts. And they're so happy. We get older and our birthdays get more. And we're like, let's oh, forget about it. I don't need anything. Learn from the children. Receive the gift of God's Son. The wages of sin is death but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We're almost done. For by grace are you saved through what? And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of what? Lest any man should what? And if we could get there by works, we sure would be boasting about it, wouldn't we? Rock solid. Building your life on the rock and not the sand. Did we make it, Raj? Hang on. One second. Let's see if we can remember, remember the funny sayings of Jesus about building a rock-solid life. I know I might have lost you a little bit today, okay? What were the funny sayings of Jesus? Number one, the way to become great is to become what? Now help me because I don't have my notes. Number two, the way to win is to lose. Number three. The way to be fruitful is to die. And number four, the way to go to heaven is not to work, but to receive it as a what? And you receive it as a little what? And did you know what I saw in this message? All through every point was a childlike faith. And, and they also, every one of these points had something to do with humility. 
Every one of them seemed to do something with humility. So it tells me that to have a rock-solid life, I've got to really humble myself. You understand or not? If at the end of my life, I want to be on solid rock, I need to start saying, thus says the Lord right now. Instead of arguing with Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, why don't you just believe it today? Say, amen. You understand? Rock solid. Let's read this again together out loud and we're done. Keep it in mind what we talked about. Y'all ready? Here we go. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one of these sayings of mine, come on, okay, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the, and the rains descended. And the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it, and great was the. Did you get the message today? Look, I'm not ready to get a busload for us to die today and go to heaven, okay? But. I hope when it comes my time I can be glad to go. I can have peace. I even hope that my time, my final days, will be times of hopefully some laughter and enjoying the ones I love. I don't want to go depressed. I don't want to go not knowing What's going to happen to me? I'd like to get that settled right now. Wouldn't you say? Amen? Say. It's pretty important what we do at Fellowship Church, isn't it? We want to give you a rock-solid life. I don't wish for a single person in our ministry to feel so depressed and defeated that you take your life. You have value. If there's one thing we try to teach you here is that you matter. Say, I matter. I have value. We've been trying to teach you that. Right? Say. Why? You must have value. You must have matter because Jesus Christ gave His life for you. How valuable are you? Amen? All right? Now, things are going to happen. The winds are going to blow. The floods are going to come. And you're going to get beat on in life. It happens. But you can still have your life on the rock. And you don't have to exit this life defeated and depressed. Are you hearing me? Did you hear the message today? Amen. It was a toughie. Let's praise the Lord for it. Amen. Come on. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Thank you, Lord, for your word today.